Hey guys, how you guys doing? Um, I'm actually at the mall right now and ran into a little bit of a situation. I was going in to pick something up, uh, an impact drill uh, at this shopping mall and uh, got the drill but came across another problem. Basically, my car is having issues cranking, and I've spent the last hour trying to get it to crank, but nothing seems to work at all. So, basically, what I did was I, uh, right off the bat, I was thinking maybe it was the brake switch. Uh, considering I did have a brake light that was out, but I replaced the battery, but that's the only thing that has me thinking about that. Good thing there's a lot of people walking around because um, I actually tested it out, had asked somebody to uh, look at my brake lights while I press on the brakes. I pressed on the brakes and the brake light was good. So, it wasn't the brake switch that was the problem. So first thing off the list was checked off. So going down the list, going down the list, I'm thinking to myself, it's not the brake light. What's the most likely scenario of a situation like this? And it might have been the battery. So I was thinking to myself, now, it. I drove about, I don't know, like five miles to the spot and... I spent maybe an hour and a half in uh, in the shopping uh, shopping center, and I'm thinking to myself, what are the chances that it could be <clears throat> could be the battery? Even if I left something on, like headlights, which I didn't because it's bright out, um, that's probably not the issue, unless it was a bad battery that wouldn't charge up. I was hoping that was the case. So I put on my headlights just to test it out. Uh, went out. Now it's quite bright outside because the sun is out. Wasn't able to see, uh, wasn't able to determine 100% whether it was the battery or not that was causing it. But I noticed that the headlights were bright enough that if I had, you know, if I had a low battery, it was bright enough to, to, to work the headlights. So I, I probably would have been able to do a slow crank. I think maybe like a little bit of a crank here and something from the engine, which I was not able to do. All right. I heard like a click each time I heard a click, but um, everything else in the car works absolutely fine. The window works. The radio came on as soon as I, uh, you know, uh, turn, try to turn on the car, vent the, the, the blow, the blower from the vents work. And, uh, you know, all the dash light came on as normal. I did not recall having a check engine light. I don't think there's one on at this moment. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, as far as everything else is concerned, it's fine. Everything is fine except I can't get the car to turn over. So I went out uh, and, uh, and uh, got the hood up, looked under it, looked at the battery. And, and granted, the battery hasn't been changed in about three years. So I was thinking to myself, maybe it's time to change the battery up. Perhaps it's time to change the battery up. Perhaps that's the problem, right? And uh, the terminal was were a bit dirty. So what I did was I went back into the mall, uh, got uh, a couple of uh, brushes, metal brushes, and a can of Coke, pour a can of Coke on terminals, took the brush, took the terminals off, and then I brushed off the debris. And there was like a lot of whitish, bluish kind of debris on there. So I was like, okay. Uh, it was now also it wasn't tight. Uh, I never actually tightened the terminals to the battery. It was tight enough where I could just bump it in. Like uh, I think last time I took a wrench and I just bump it in. And what I did was I could I was able to. Um, uh, 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 you know, twist it back and forth just to get the terminals off. Uh, put some, put some uh, uh, coke on it, on on both terminals. Clean it out. It was a hundred percent clean. Popped it back on, and uh, try to turn the car on after that, and nothing, nothing. Now I couldn't say a hundred percent it was battery at that point, but thinking about it, 
I was like, okay, okay, so this is what the situation is, all right? I'm going to have to ask somebody to try to give me a, 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 a boost, all right? So I waited, uh, I, I waited a little bit because obviously I'm in a tight parking spot. There's a, there's a car in front of me, there's a car in back of me. And uh, I was thinking to myself, okay, okay, what to do at this point? What to do at this point? Uh, okay, so I went through a couple of other scenarios um, and um, I was able to get, but before I get to the other scenarios, I was able to get somebody to give me a, um, a, 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 a jump. Uh, the, the, the car that was right next to me, the guy, uh, you know, was nice enough to give me a jump. I had pretty long jumper cables. Um, so got the back, got it, you know, got the cables on, wait a couple minutes, try to turn it on that way and nothing. Just heard a click. The click was a little bit stronger, but I just heard a click. Nothing else happened. So at that point I, I was like, I can rule out. I already ruled out a couple of things. I can rule out the battery because that jump should have just started the car up. <clears throat> and uh, on top of that, I could... Okay. All right. Let's... Uh, okay. I, I actually did look at the the, the, um, the negative. The negative line that came... That, that was on the negative terminal of uh, of the battery. That's also important when, when, when you're looking for some something that could be causing it because a bad ground... A bad negative, a bad ground could cause a no start issue. All right, even if the battery is 100% good, or getting a jump on it. So I was like, okay, uh, I, I did actually look at the ground before that when I turned when I when I cleaned up the terminals, and uh, the ground was good, so I could rule out the battery 100%. I could rule out the battery. Uh, on top of that, at that point, I could also rule out. I could also rule out the um, the alternator. All right. So basically, if you guys don't know what the test for the alternator is, most of the time, if you guys have a bad alternator, the alternator goes dead on you. It will go dead on you while your car was on, while your engine was on, while your car was driving. It will go dead on you. All right. Normally, that's what happens when you have a bad alternator. So there's a, there's a rare chance that you know the battery, the, your alternator was bad. All right, and then. And it wasn't charging up your battery, but you drove it to the very extent to where it died out after you parked it, and then you couldn't get it to park. That's a rare occasion that it happened, but the only reason why I could the reason why I could rule out the alternator is is because once once you jump the battery, um, your car should be able to start just from the jump alone. Uh, and uh, once you take the cables off, obviously, the, if the alternator is bad, you're not getting any kind of electricity to the battery. You know, it'll die out on you. Which didn't happen because the car didn't turn on at all. So that's I could rule out that I could do rule out all those things. At this point, I could rule out all those things because my car wasn't running when it died. It was sitting parked for a good hour and a half, and then I got in, tried to turn it on, it didn't do anything, and that's my situation at this point. All right. So knowing all of that, knowing all of that. I was like, let's move on to what else it could be, all right? Maybe it's the relay, maybe it's the fuses, that's the next, um, that's the next most predictable thing as far as no starts are concerned, especially when there's no cranks, and, uh, and uh, I actually did think about maybe it was the fuel pump, that idea did come up, but, 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 you know, it's not going to matter because, because... It's just not going to matter because I can't get the car to crank. Normally, if you can get your car to crank and then it wouldn't turn over, that would be a no start, uh, uh, but a cranking situation, there, which could be a few uh, a, a few line that could uh, basically cause an issue like that. All right, but back to the fuses, which has a lot something to do with the fuses. I'm looking at the fuses and uh, trying to spot whether there is. Um, you know, uh, something that was burnt, a, a burnt fuse. Now, I wasn't able to, um, I wasn't able to do any of that because, um, I mean, I I could do as the smell test, see if there's any, you know, like the visual test, see if there's any kind of burnt, uh, you know, the brownish look on, on any of the fuses. Didn't appear to me like any of that um, uh, was present. But um, going back to what my, 
going back to what, uh, now going back to all the experiences that I've had with fuses causing a no start, um, I could pretty much pin it down to two, um, two ways of figuring out whether your fuses uh, would be a component of your no start situation. All right. Now, one of those things, one of those ways you can figure it out is, um, okay, I had this instance uh, where I had a Honda where where um, I had no power inside the car whatsoever. There was like no power at all inside the car as if the terminals were taken off and there's no a connection to a battery or a power source. Nothing worked inside the car. It was completely, completely, completely dead. So thinking about that, when I had that problem, it was a fuse problem. It was a main fuse that blew. All right, That main fuse connected the, the, the cable that came from the positive of the battery terminal uh, to the fuse. It's to the, the, the fuse box itself. Now, the way I figured that out was um, I actually took two uh, two uh, uh, screwdrivers that I had, and I connected one portion of it to another portion uh, to the other portion of it. Uh, you know where the fuses touch the uh, the the two fuse terminals. I put that together, and uh, everything started beeping, turned on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At that point, I knew it was that main fuse that was causing my issue. So. When I had that issue, once I put that fuse in, uh, it started working again. Everything worked fine. Everything worked good. Everything was good after that. So I knew it was the main fuse. That was one one instance where I had a fuse issue. Unfortunately, um, that's not the situation I'm having here because uh, I'm getting full power. I'm getting 100% full power except... My car is not cranking over. It's not like my car is completely dead, like like that previous issue I had. I have like power for everything, for 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 the power windows, for the remote. Uh, you know, that's how I got into my car. Everything works inside the car, so that's not the main fuse. I know that for sure, and I you know that's not it's not the main fuse. All right, so the second issue that I had previously, as far as the a, a fuse problem causing my car not to start before, uh, was. I had, I had a a no, a, a no start but a cranking situation. I was able to get it to crank, but I wasn't able to get it to turn over. Now, going back to my fuel pump, uh, you know, when I was uh, trying to figure out whether it was, you know, when I mentioned the fuel uh, fuel pump and and how it relates to this is, I think the fuse was either the fuel pump or the fuse to the car's computer. All right, I had those two. Uh, uh, it was either one of those two things, all right. Obviously, I'm not getting a crank, so I can't say that it's it it, it it's the the fuel pump fuse that's, that's causing the problem. I can also verify that it is not the car's computer that's causing the problem, or fuse that connects the car the you know to to the computer. Basically, I have a a a a, a reader on me, an OBD2 reader on me, where I plugged it in because. Uh, you know, I you know first thing I did, well I did that somewhere in between all this, uh, just to figure out whether there's an uh, um, a check engine light or, or some kind of, you know whether a code came up for the car and and it read everything. It says there's no codes, or, or you know everything was you know it it, it read everything. So re- the 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 fact that it was able to read everything <coughs> tells me that. You know, you know the, the 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 computers in the car is fine. Like like I'm not getting any kind of weird thing happening with, uh, happening with, you know anything. Everything works the way it's supposed to work, except it wouldn't crank. So, going through all those situations, it's not. It's, it's I I don't believe it's the fuses, but I didn't have a fuse tester to test it. Now I could have gone inside to buy a fuse fuse tester, but but I mean, seeing as how. I've got at least a couple of fuse tester, uh, and uh, I didn't want to buy another one just for this situation, seeing as how I don't believe that it's the fuse that's causing the problem. <clears throat> now, could it have been the relay? Going to the relay now. Relays are a little bit more difficult to 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 to, to figure out. But I will say this. I will say this. All right. 
every time I turn try to turn the car on, it would click. Um, normally, what happens if if you get a click every time you try to turn the car on, if it clicks, that's normally a good sign that the relay is working because. Uh, you know, that's the relay. Relay, actually, I believe there's, uh, you know, it, it clicks just to start up. There's a click because apparently um, there's terminals that, that, that click together to, to connect the whole entire, uh, you know, to, 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 to get it to start, for lack of a better word, to get it to start. But... Seeing as how I, I was hearing a click each and every time I try to start, and I try to start this car maybe at least 15, maybe even 20 times. I was just going like, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't the, pretty sure that it wasn't the uh, a relay because of that. Just because of that, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the relay. Which, which puts me in this situation where it's, Maybe the starter could be the starter. Maybe the starter could be the starter. Now, that that I did I did not think of that firsthand because I did have the starter swapped out maybe like eight months ago. I swapped it out eight months ago, and um, uh, you know I only probably put in maybe like fifteen thousand miles on the car within now those eight months, <clears throat> and I was hoping. That it wasn't the starter because getting 15,000 miles out of a... Now, it wasn't a brand new starter that I bought. It was a refurbished starter. Getting 15,000 miles out of a refurbished starter is not a good thing. All right? It's just not a good thing. All right? That's just a defective item if that's the case because you're supposed to get well over 100,000 miles from it. All right. So, basically, that's the situation and uh, there's a couple of ways to figure out the starter, uh, whether it's a starter or not. If it was, you could actually try to, uh, you know, bang on the starter and try to start it. Try to do that. Now, I didn't do that because I didn't have a uh, a a crowbar on me, and I didn't feel like going back into the uh, into the shopping center to to, to get one either. Because I have a couple of crowbars, but I don't have one uh, on me. Didn't have one on me, so I was like, okay, fine, fine, fine. That's you know, uh, at, at this point, uh, I, I pretty much gone through everything as far as you know what I could think of was was the problem. So I was like, I ended up calling AAA, and uh, you know they're supposed to come and pick my uh, pick up my car. And uh, once I get home, I'm gonna figure out everything as far as you know what it is specifically that's causing it. Um, if you guys, if you guys are having the same situations, which I think you guys do. Uh, if you guys are watching this video, uh, just go down the, the list of everything I've eliminated. All right, ninety percent of the time, uh, you know, you should be able to figure out what's causing your no start uh, if, if if you're in this kind of situation. But uh, but uh, just um, hold on, all right, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you guys. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you guys an update on my situation. All right, guys. All right, guys. So this is, uh, I, I, I spent uh, two hours waiting for AAA to pick my car up, but no big deal. Uh, AAA pays for itself. Uh, if you guys don't have AAA, I highly recommend AAA. If you guys don't have it, uh, it, it's well worth it. But going back to this situation with my car, I, I retested everything. Uh, the fuses, rechecked the lines, we re re redid everything as far as I could see. I redid everything, the fuses, the lines, uh, every single thing, uh, the battery itself. Uh, you know, I, I, I even tried to jump that a couple of times, the battery. And and, and, and it turned out that it, the one thing... Uh, was probably the starter because I did that relay test with a paper clip on the relay just to get around the whole relay and it didn't start at all. It didn't crank. It made no noise. Didn't even hear a click. So I was like, okay, okay, this is the situation. What I'm going to do is, uh, I, I'm like 99% sure it's the, it's, it's a starter. So I went in, took everything out and, uh, 
and 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 pretty much got to the starter. All right, before I took it out, I actually placed a line, a wire from the bat, from from the positive terminal to the solenoid of the starter. Try to bump it, got nothing from it. So I took it out, did the test again, got nothing from it. At that point, I was 100% sure it was a starter that was the problem. Took it back to AutoZone. It's 100% warranted, which still kind of sucks. It's 100% warranty, but it still kind of sucks, right? I only got 15,000 miles from it. Spent all that time waiting. Spent all that time redoing the work. But uh, I could have gotten a, a, a brand new one, but the brand new one would have cost me $300 instead of another one for free. Got the other, Got the one. Exchange it out. It is what it is. You know, it is what it is, guys. All right. So, popped it in, put everything back together. Well, I popped it in and then try to start it. Uh, put everything back together, try to start it. It start up, start up, start up, start up, start up. Everything works, guys. All right. So, so it was a starter that was causing this no start. Now, if you guys are having the same situation, like I said before. All right, what you guys should do, definitely should do, is just go down the list. Eliminate everything off the list that I went through um, earlier in the video. And 99% of the time, that should be the reason why your car is not starting. That should be the reason why you guys have, should have a no crank, the no start issue. All right. And uh, if this has helped you guys out in any way, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Uh, if you guys have any comments at all, please leave leave your comments in the comment section. All right, guys, I really appreciate. It. All right, guys. Take